Castles, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I'm Sassy Cass, and if you're new, hi. I'm Sassy Cass, aka Sass, aka Sassy No Nips. And if you're new, please subscribe because that helps me out around here. And if you're not new, well, fuck. Good to see you again, my lovely little Cassie Doodle. This past weekend, I went to a music event. Very much fun, very much great. My last video, we were vibing because Pretty Lights announced his tour. Guess what? I got a ticket to said show on the tour. Woo! Celebrate! Blast off a confetti cannon. I don't know, but I'm hyped, I'm humped, and I'm ready to get bumped in the funk. You know? Not making any sense. Why are we here today? I kind of want to talk about what your favorite influencer isn't telling you about influencing. You see... I've been trying to do influency stuff for about since the pandemic. Let's be real. I've been no before the pandemic. Let's be even more real. Before I even tried to do like traditional influency stuff, um, I owned my own hula hoop brand, and I was trying to be like a hula hoop influencer before that was even a thing. Like I was making my own hula hoops. I had my own brand. I had ambassadors repping my brand. I was creating my own community. I had a Facebook group. Just like really in it, like hosting challenges, events, giveaways. You fucking name it, I was doing it at the time. Um, posting constantly in other Facebook groups, trying to get new people to follow my brand, be a part of the message I was spreading of good vibes and just like being yourself and staying true to you. And we're still doing that today. It's just a little bit different than it once was. But even then I struggled with the influencing thing. I could never, I can't, I couldn't figure out how to go viral. Going viral is not as easy as they make it seem. Some of these influencers have somehow figured it out down to a motherfucking science. Um, not all, but some. And they are, they're fucking making money hand over fist. But they don't tell you that in the beginning you ain't making shit over fist. It's so much harder than you think it is. <laughs> Um, it's exhausting. Like having to create multiple types of different content on top of posting said different types of content while also trying to edit it all is fucking impossible. Which is why I hired a team. That is part of the reason why my ex friend and I kind of had a falling out. She had issues with me hiring a team to help me with this social media journey. I refuse to do it alone. I wanna be a part of something. I wanna be a part of something big. I want to bring people along the journey with me and bring them up. And this is where my friends at On The Track Media, On The Track Productions comes in. Q Joel. Joel helps me edit YouTube videos. He helps me keep my social media organized. He helps me execute plans as far as like projects I wanna do. Um, goals that I have, what we're gonna do next. Like he is like the fucking brains behind the operation. Fucking amazing. Shout outs to you, Joel. I love you so much. Seriously, Joel has been there for me when nobody else was, okay? So this man has him and his wonderful girlfriend. We cannot forget Shoshana, a fucking angel on earth. Both of them have been there for me. Listen to me cry helped me navigate times in my life when my most close relationships were falling apart. So shout outs to them for, and literally they don't have to do that. That's not in their job description. You know, I didn't hire them to fucking be my therapist. <laughs> so for them to be emotionally available for me is almost more valuable than some of the tasks that they help me carry out because wow, well, they're just amazing people. Anyways, I hired a company to help me and they're fucking incredible. They're amazing. I want both of us to succeed and do well. And I feel like just so much excitement because we're making plans. We're trying to execute, we're knocking it out. The only thing that's left to do is to just keep pumping out the content, right? So I feel like your favorite content creators aren't telling you they have help. <laughs> they are not doing this alone. Um, I refuse to do it alone. I want to build people up, bring people with me. We are here to fucking make our dreams come true. I refuse to not be 
something magical in this world because I'm not gonna be the same as everybody else. I'm not the same as everybody else and I'm trying to get over that, but I'm like, I'm different. And so are you probably. You're just too afraid to like take those chances and fucking listen to yourself and stop listening to the people around you because believe me, that's a hard thing to do. Doing it because it's cringy. I feel like I guarantee that a lot of these content creators that you think don't make cringy content, they think is maybe a little cringy and they're like, fuck, but they're posting it anyways. Like no public, all publicity is good publicity. You know, that's what they say. Same with the comments. I hate the hate comments, the mean stuff people are gonna say, but that's only helping you. It's only helping you thrive in the algorithm. So learning to have that thick skin is hard but it's something that we all have to work on and do in this industry, I believe. I don't think your favorite content creators let you know that they're staying up late long nights creating and doubting and feeling like they're not sure what the hell they're doing with their lives. Like, not everybody is, you know, killing it and making money hand over fist, like I mentioned earlier that journey in the beginning is slow, but like you start to see a little progress and you start to find your sweet spot in certain areas. It's all sometimes about a little trial and error until you dial in what works for you because what works for one creator is not gonna work for the other creator. And it could be because of the content you're creating, your personality that you're portraying. You know, there are so many factors that play into like what is gonna work for one person and not the other, but you have to stay consistent, that's for sure. And consistency is something that I have struggled with probably throughout the three years that I've really started taking this seriously because like I said before COVID, I was like an influencer before it was a thing. Then COVID happened and I kind of just like went underground. I started live streaming and I was influencing people to send me, you know, their gifts through a live streaming app, right? Being entertaining, selling content, doing various different silly things naughty things it's i've been through some weird stuff on the internet since i started becoming a live streamer and i feel like that's kind of like where i really thrive i love being live i love talking to myself if you haven't noticed but i didn't know like how much money people could really make doing this because there are people whose lives are fully changing overnight you try i've seen girls do one lipstick li like i can't talk i saw one girl do a lipstick or lip gloss review once her video goes viral, that's all her content is now. That's all she's doing. She's getting lipstick sent to her, PRI packages, you know, brand deals, you know? And so it's like, whoa, your whole life can change. And sometimes the algorithm chooses the content for you. So I wanted to also mention that as well. Some of these content creators are probably doing something that they never thought that would be their content, wouldn't be their niche. But one day they did a video, it went viral and they continue to stay consistent doing that type of content. And boom, now they're, you know, making a living doing something they're never thought in a million years. I've seen people get on the internet. This one girl, she started on there doing like random like lifestyle type videos on YouTube. Now she is one of the biggest true crime creators. Her name is um, Kendall Ray. If you scroll back onto her page, some of her first videos are just like lifestyle makeup type videos. Now she does just true crime reviews. She has a huge true crime following. She has a great community. And it's just because it's something she was interested in. She stayed consistent with it and many of her videos are doing well. And now it's like literally her whole career. So just keep your options open. I think that, you know, sometimes you have to close out some of those closed minded people in your life that just like, and tell you bad things about yourself and what you should and shouldn't be doing with your life. And I have one of those, believe me. We love you, Dale. But my stepdad, he <laughs> is a pain in the ass sometimes. And he's just like, doesn't believe in the social media thing. He thinks it's stupid, it's dumb, someday it's gonna be gone. But I refuse to live in the 21st century as a child of the 21st century and not take advantage of what the 21st century has to offer. There's a piece of the pie for everyone, even him. He doesn't even know it yet, but you can literally find something and find your, your crew, your people. I think that we got this. And I'm struggling every day because sometimes I'm like, I'm a loser, I suck. But I've been doing little experiments with my mom with the power of words and filling yourself with good words and positive affirmation. And I knew this from before, back when 
I was doing a good vibe guru thing and being all about self-love, self-affirmations and building myself up. But the power of words are fucking powerful. You gotta say good things to yourself because the words you speak into yourself are the words that will flourish. Power words, not I hope, I will. It's not like if, it's when, you know, it's using those power words. I keep telling people like, we've been buying lottery tickets. My mom likes to, and I'm like, we're gonna be millionaires. And people like always look at me and smile. And I am like always introducing myself as, when, especially when the lottery, I'm like, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And it's just funny because they like laugh at me and it's just like, it might not be from the lottery, but you know, I'm speaking those words out into the universe. And I guess I only do it kind of like when we're doing the lottery stuff because it's funny and it's a joke, but I genuinely mean it. My mom thinks it's silly. So use those power words. I'm gonna be a fucking doctor. I'm gonna be a fucking nurse, whatever. I'm gonna fucking follow my dreams and be a social media fucking influencer. Do whatever you're doing, speak those power words because you know, it doesn't always have to apply to just like social media. So yeah, I'm just working on conquering my own inner demons that tell me like, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're worthless because that's not true. I'm actually kind of a bad bitch, you know? There's a reason why people look at me differently. People treat me differently. I've had people come up to me recently and be like, are you famous? And I had to be like, not yet <laughs> because what? That's so weird. And I, I couldn't understand like what about me made this man think that I was famous. You know, I was going to my storage unit in the middle of Las Vegas to get the day he had first saw me, I was getting a TV out of there. So I grab a TV. It's like, if I was famous, I'm like, would, would I be getting fucking TVs out of storage? Probably not. Um, but like, I have this air about me. My mom's like, you kind of walk around with this air that you think you're special. And I'm like, oh, shouldn't everyone? Everyone should think that they got like, their shit don't stink a little, right? And like that, some people will call that cockiness or whatever, like it's not, like I feel like it's almost stupid to be like, it's not a crime to like love yourself and be kind of full of yourself because like, what's wrong with having like a good, like mental image of yourself and like thinking highly of yourself and your powers and what you can do. Like, yeah, I'm a smart ass bitch and I'm fucking funny and I'm cute on top of that. <laughs> I'm getting fucking weak at the knees for myself, you know, so. Love yourself fucking louder than anybody else because that's not a fucking crime because hopefully you can fucking attract somebody that's going to love you just as loudly because they see how loud you love yourself and they know they got to compete with the love that you give to yourself. Does that make sense? Not that love's a competition, but it's like, I love myself so loudly that you're going to have to love me so loud that it makes me like notice because I treat myself so well, right? With that being said, I'm going to love myself loudly. I'm fucking finding my way. I'm creating this space that makes me happy and allows me to create. And I feel like this is gonna be a very transformative journey being in this space, in this room that I'm in, where I can create like this next version of myself. And you're gonna see me just like be a whole different person in the next six months. I'm so excited. Oh God. <laughs> uh... Hope you're enjoying this video and I hope that it's making some sort of message to inspire you to like be like okay I got this whatever it is you know this video has mostly an influencer like tone to it but even if you're you know chasing your influencing dream while also chasing your fucking academic dreams your tradesman gene dreams I can't talk today <laughs> Uh, your tradesman jeans? Oh my god, I wanted some dick so bad. Dreams. Dream, 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 dream. Follow your dreams, bitch. That's what I'm trying to say. And fucking don't let your influencing fucking influencers, the people you look up to that have millions and millions and millions of followers, views, likes, whatever. They don't know shit either. They're literally just fucking figuring out the internet just like we are. They don't have some Bible on how to figure it out. They figured out what's worked for them. They've duplicated it. They've stayed consistent with it and they're rocking with it. And it might not be what they want to be doing, but they're doing it because eventually when you get enough fucking followers, fans, whatever, you can do whatever the fuck you want because your fans are there for you and whatever you're rocking with. So just fucking do it, rock it, kick some ass, suck some dick. I hope you have a good day and I hope you come back to see me again. And I know this is gonna be a great video because I felt good about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
I'm gonna go enjoy some of the beautiful weather today. My friend invited me to come hang out in the backyard while she does yard work and I'm gonna go take my hula hoops and hula hoop in the yard because it's nice and I'm foaming at the mouth. Okay, well, subscribe, like, comment, tell me. This is good. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.